I do want to talk about Edu, right? Because I think that Edu gets a rough ride from some fans. Do I agree with every single decision that Edu makes? Do I agree with everything he's done since he's come in at the club? No, not every single individual thing. But it is impossible to deny that Edu has done a good job and has been a big part in why Arsenal are where they are today, competing for the Premier League title, which a decade ago felt like we were a million miles away from. You can't deny that Edu overall and Arteta as a, a kind of pairing have been very, very good for this football club. Along the way, have there been things that they've both done that I've looked at and gone, I don't necessarily agree with that in isolation? Yeah, of course. I don't think any manager in the world would always satisfy every single fan. Like there will be decisions that Alex Ferguson made at Manchester United that United fans at the time would have questioned. There are decisions that Pep Guardiola makes that Manchester City fans look at and go, what the hell is that? Like, for example, when he went into a Champions League final, played without a DM or whatever he'd done and got them essentially beaten by Chelsea. Every manager, every sporting director will do things that you as an individual and me as an individual won't agree with. But that's why when you're assessing how good or bad these people are for your football club, you have to zoom out. You have to zoom out and you have to look at it more broadly and more widely. And I would say that looking at it more broadly and looking at it more widely, both of those guys have been very, very good for Arsenal. And my books are going to fall down and hit me on the head again. This is supposed to be like a weight thing. It's not very good, is it? Um, but I would say that both of those have done really, really good work at Arsenal Football Club. And I, look, the other day I sat here and I said I disagreed with what they did with the Eddie and Ketia situation and that I would have done the deal and all of that. So I, I can disagree with them, but I think it's way too far when people go, oh, Eddie's crap. Like I saw a tweet and I don't want to I don't want to name the person. Right. Because I I actually know the person. Um, And I th and and I don't want to out someone and and end up with people highlighting it and maybe going after them and criticizing them because I don't think that's right online. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. But this particular individual has put out some ridiculous tweets, ex posts, whatever you call them nowadays online. On the 13th of August, he said, morning, Arsenal, sack the worst football director in the world. Thanks. <laughs> Yesterday, has Edu been sacked yet? Asking for a friend. What is that? What is that? Like, we are, in a lot of people's eyes, the favourites to win the Premier League this year. That's because the club have been making progress year upon year after the last few years with Edu and with Arteta at the helm. You don't have to agree with every single decision, but give them their flowers for the work that they have done. Tom says, Harry, sometimes I wonder why Arteta and Edu have hardly signed attackers when compared to how many windows both have been in their respective positions. Would uh, would like Arsenal to sign some attackers. So I agree with that, that in the sense of the number of defenders that we've brought in has been really disproportionate to the number of attackers. But I think there's a couple of reasons for that, which I'll, I'll try and share. And you can tell me if you agree or disagree, of course. First of all, I think when, when Mikel Arteta came in, attackers-wise, in terms of that centre-forward, we had Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, who at the time was producing a lot. Single-handedly, I would argue, won us that FA Cup with his goals in the semi-final and the final. Did brilliantly. We had a top, top striker when Mikel Arteta came in. Not only did we have a top, top striker in Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, but we had Alexander Lacazette at the club as well. Another good level forward, not on Aubameyang's level in terms of outputs, nowhere near, but we had two good centre-forwards. We had Saka coming through. Um, we just spent £72 million on Nicolas Pepe. And I think Mikel Arteta would have looked at it and thought, the real problem in this team is at the back end of the pitch, and so I need to address that first. So naturally, that's what we went to, to fix, first and foremost. Over time, we have ended up with injuries in those defensive positions. Julian Timber was signed. Um, we ended up losing him for an entire season. You look at Tommy Asu, who was also brought in by the Arteta Edu regime, who's constantly been in and out when it comes to fitness, and they probably worry about that. 
We brought Zinchenko in as a left back. Um, you know, so that was one that needed to be done. Gabriel, etc. Calafiori's coming now. I, I get you. Like we have signed more defenders than attackers, but you've also got to think about what Arteta inherited and why that has been the case. Now, Bukayo Saka's come through and been incredible as an attacker, which has reduced our need to go out and bring in that right wing option. Gabriel Martinelli has done really, really well over the last few years. OK, the last season wasn't as good as the one prior, but he obviously looks at him and thinks, I trust you and I think you can be a big part. He did sign Jesus. He did sign Kai Havertz. Um, you know, and he did sign Leandro Trossard. So he has brought in attacking players. It's not, I don't want to bring in attackers. I think he's just addressing what he believes are the main needs of the squad. And I think because when he came in, we were better stocked in the attacking department than we were defensively. You know, you're going to compare Aubameyang to Mustafi in terms of what Arteta inherited. Like, you can't. So I think that's that's a lot to do with it. I really, really do.